Good morning. We welcome, we welcome all who are joining us from your home. We are so pleased that you are with us in spirit. We are also pleased to welcome Father Raju, who is here this weekend speaking on behalf of his community in support of their missionary work in India. Father Raju is the priest chaplain at St. Mary Medical Center. We respectfully ask that all cell phones be silenced. Today, we are celebrating the Feast of the Transfiguration of our Lord. I am Lynn O'Melia. Our second lector is Dave Parker, and our leader of song is Stephanie Dembick. The deacon of the Mass is Deacon Mace Mazzoni. Monsignor Michael McCormack is our principal celebrant. Today, there will be a second collection for the Mission Cooperative Appeal. Registration for the 2023 school year is available for our parish religious education program. Emails have been sent to all prep families. Parents are asked to please use the link in the email or visit our parish website to register their children for prep. Thank you. Our parish school, Holy Family Regional Catholic School, is accepting new registrations for the 2023 school year. This week's Pot of Gold Jackpot Prize is $14,000. Tickets are available in the vestibule of the church and also at the rectory. As we prepare for Mass, the prayer for priestly vocations can be found on the inside cover of the Blue Prayer Book. Please stand and let us pray. Father, in your plan for salvation, you provide shepherds for your people. Fill your church with the spirit of courage and love. Raise up worthy ministers for your altars and ardent but gentle servants of the gospel. Bless our archdiocese with numerous vocations to the sacred priesthood. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our entrance hymn is number 212, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow, number 212. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Welcome those who are joining us from their home. I also want to offer a very special warm welcome to Father Raju, who is visiting us this weekend. Father celebrated our 5.30 Mass last evening, 7 o'clock this morning, and he's preaching at all the Masses. And I know that many of you recognize Father from at least one or two places, maybe both, uh, St. Mary's Hospital, uh, where he's been for 31 years, serving uh, our area and beyond. And he also served at St. Joseph the Worker for 19 years, coming and helping on weekends, and I'm sure during the week. And so, Father, we're very, very grateful that you're here. Father's here 
speaking on behalf of the missions, a particular mission, his own diocese in India. So very, very happy to have you with us. Thank you. In addition to your own personal intentions for today's Mass, if we could especially remember Christopher Rovinall, uh, commending him to the Lord, and also uh, Ed Rafferty. Many of you know Ed. Ed entered into eternal life last Sunday afternoon after a very long illness. Uh, many of you uh, know him personally, but he also is a member of our choir, and along with his wife, Phyllis, who is here today. So Phyllis, we're praying for you and your family as you prepare for Ed's funeral mass on Tuesday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. O oh God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirm the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers, and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship, 
Grant to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. This time we have the children's liturgy of the word. I invite children to come forward. So you could be going over to the St. Joseph Chapel to hear God's word. My dear children, you will now go to hear God's word to reflect on the wonderful things God has done for us. We will await your return so together we can celebrate the Eucharist. Go now and listen to God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was snow bright, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire, with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were opened. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory. This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You will do well to be attentive to it, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord.
Good morning to you. I recognize so many familiar faces. Um, I'm not here today as a hospital chaplain, but um, representing my struggling fishing community, I've come to make an appeal for your financial and prayerful support to continue our work among our people. It's a great privilege for me to be with you this weekend. After my ordination, I was assigned a fishing village which had two churches with 3,000 families. One day, a young widow named Bina approached me with her two daughters crying. She had just lost her husband while going fishing. That happened during monsoon. The sea was rough and dangerous. Despite the warning from the weatherman, he was forced to go for fishing by the hungry faces of his children. The family lost the only breadwinner in the sea waves. Unable to assist them financially, I wrote to a priest friend then working in Detroit. He sent me $200. In the letter followed, he said $50 was the gift of two schoolboys who saved that money for the missions by selling newspapers. This kind of accidents and requests are ordinary in my diocese. However, today the kind of request is multiplied amid the pandemic, which all of us can relate to. In the last three years, our people were under triple lockdown on and off. Fishermen were restricted from fishing, which is their livelihood. The virus is still a threat. With no steady income, many families struggled to put food on the table. Unlike your rich and blessed country, no incentive checks, no unemployment benefits, no assistance from the government except 10 pounds of rice was given to an individual under poverty line. Uh, for several months, the diocese from its limited resource distributed raw food kits with vegetable oils and sugar to the needy parishioners. 2020 and 2021, were financially very depressing to my diocese, which is suspended several humanitarian projects. Today, I stand before you primarily to express our sincere gratitude for the outpouring of love and compassion you showed toward the missions. You showed it during at the time of 2004 tsunami to assist our fishermen and many who from St. Joseph helped my fishing village to have a drinking water. And you show it year after year to support various missionary groups. Uh, your sacrifices mean so much to us and we are deeply grateful to you, to our families, to Archbishop, to the director of the publication of faith, uh, in particular to a loving and vibrant young, young in mind and body, our pastor, Monsignor McCormack. It was wonderful to be around him. He made everyone to feel at home and very kind and hospital, fed me very well. And uh, I don't know where he gets the energy from seen many, many days, day and night, uh, in the hospital visiting people, and homes visiting people. He's a really faithful steward of the Lord and of a hardworking missionary. 
I thank you very much, Monsignor, for giving me this privilege to be with your community. My Archdiocese of Trivandrum is situated in the southern part of India, in Kerala state, which is uh, more developed. Yet, when it comes to this particular community, it is very backward. Our diocese has about 270 Catholics. 90% of the people are, by occupation, ill-equipped traditional fishermen, and 10% are farm workers. Our ancestors were converted to Christianity by the toils and prayers of Saint Francis Xavier. 450 years ago, when people were divided by caste system, and our people were denied of religious freedom. At this time of caste discrimination, the Christian understanding of God, God's love and mercy, religious freedom and equality, preached by Saint Francis Xavier, appealed to my people so much so, the entire villages accepted Christian faith. Majority of our fishermen lives in small clustered thatched huts and homes along the coastal belt of Arabian Sea in an atmosphere of malnutrition and undernourishment. These villages are densely populated. <clears throat> For example, in a one square mile area, more than 3,000 families live, not by choice, but by destiny. No land available. And the main means of livelihood is fishing. Poor they are, many fishermen cannot afford to have a mechanized boat. So six nights in a week, these fishermen go deep into the Arabian Sea in primitive sailboat. Regardless of thunder, rain, and lightning, whether they get fish or not, spend the whole night in the sea, come back to the shore next day morning. Then their wives and grown-up daughters carry the fish to market for sale. Fishing is seasonal, only for seven months. Lack of resources and the scarcity of alternative employments make their lives miserable. Many days, the children go to bed hungry. During monsoon, torrential rain washes away many homes from the shore. In times of natural calamity, they are at the mercy of the state and religious organizations for food and shelter. In the middle of fear, uncertainty, and death generated by the pandemic, several families lost their homes to Hurricane Tokate that swept through the coast in May 2021, leaving 329 houses fully and 800 partially destroyed. The victims are still sheltered in public school buildings. The houses, they are not insured. Besides uh, the return of several young men who we are employed in Gulf countries, mainly in construction and service industries due to layoff in COVID-19, added to their misery. They are hardworking, yet to find employment at home. With no steady income, either from fishing or from the Middle East, families struggle to support themselves. Our churches are stressed to support the most vulnerable, the elders, elderly, the orphans, the priests and the seminarians. 155 seminarians are in training now. I was the first uh, seminarian to get ordained out of 150 seminarians from my own village. Now we have uh, 14 priests after I was ordained. Amid these challenges, the faith of the people remains intact. At the normal times, 
90% of our people attend Sunday Masses. In our missionary journey, when we find our path thorny, our future gloomy, when our lives are tossed about by the storms of the pandemic, fear, uncertainty, and when widows come and they knock at our doors with their kids for a pair of clothes or for a few grains of rice to feed them in their hunger, though helpless, we stay with our people, struggle with them, pray with them, strengthening their faith and leading them to Jesus who tells whatever your worries and struggles, not be discouraged, come as you are. God my Father, who is eternal, self-sacrificing love, desires all his children be saved from suffering and death. God wants us to have the same experience the apostles had on the mountain top at the transfiguration of his beloved son. God is calling us to something higher than this life, not to be entangled with the worries and concerns of this world, following his son's example. When the disciples heard this voice of the Father called to be higher than, they were very afraid. But then Jesus came and touched them saying, rise, do not be afraid, don't get discouraged, I'll be with you. And he tells the same. Fear not, I am with you. Take courage, O oh, you of little faith, this too will pass. It is challenging to grasp this message and remain hopeful to when our people were constantly tested and see no long-term relief. Yet this is possible when we listen to God's voice and follow his son. God's love dwelling among us. When we understand Jesus deeply, we love more generously. Moreover, our faith in you, that we are not alone in the struggle, your love, your smile, your kindness, your hospitality and support keeps us strengthened. You give us hope to persevere and carry on Jesus' mission among our people. At times I wonder if you stop helping the missions, how would they survive? So may I request that you make a one-time sacrifice According to your means, maybe one meal of your family. $50 will provide one month of food for a family of four people. Or one month of food and large expense of an orphan studying in our special high school. $100 will pay for one month expense of a seminarian. Whatever you could would be a great blessing. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your prayers. In return, we have nothing to offer you materially except our continued gratitude and prayers. And the gospel promise, uh, you are fortunate because the poor cannot repay you. But the repayment will be made when the virtuous rise again. Thank you. It's the second collection after communion. If you are not prepared today, you can always bring it back next weekends. And if you are going to write a check, please do so, payable to St. Francis Caprini under the memo, kindly write for the missions. Thank you.
Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, with hopeful hearts, let us offer our needs and the needs of the world to our merciful Father. For the Holy Father, God continue to bless him with wisdom and strength in leading the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For leaders of nations, may God reveal his power, inspiring them in humble service to him and to the people in their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who wrestle with doubt, may God reveal the love of Christ and draw them to a deeper faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all gathered here, may God in his kindness enable us to hear and obey his voice. Let us pray to the Lord. For all our first responders and military, those who face danger for the sake of others, and for those who strengthen them, their families and loved ones, that God will surround them with his loving presence and grant them protection and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all our veterans, that God will be with them and protect them always for their dedication, courage, and selfless service to our nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those struggling with illness or disease, that each day might be a new revelation of God's love for them. We especially pray for all those whose names are written in the White Intercessory Book, and also Betty Brooks, Mike Kane, Betsy Coran, Robert Garrity, Richard Hart, Bill Hottenstein, Mike Kapla, Joe Killian, Kyle Lester, Claire Lucente, Marlene Parks, Michelle Ridgway, Stephen Skaleski, Joe Trailers, and Mark Whitaker Jr. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who have died, may they enjoy eternal life in heaven and behold the face of God, especially Anthony Santafond, Ed Rafferty, and Catherine Walset. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, the Lord Christopher Rovenaut, that he too be received into the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, you call us into communion with you and with each other. 
Hear our prayers and graciously grant what we ask in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Configuration number one, two, three. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings made here to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor, cleanse us from the stains of sin. 
through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form which he shares with all humanity that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples and that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what so wonderfully shone forth first in its head. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end. We acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim the death of Lord and profess the resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Christopher and Edward, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they, who were united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. To Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We invite those who are participating with us from their home and therefore not able to physically receive Holy Communion to join in praying the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn will be number 334, O Sacrament Most Holy, number 334. O Sacrament Most Holy, number 334.
Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I thank you for your presence and for your very active participation at Mass today. Grateful for all those who are joining us from their home. Special thank you to Father Raju again for being here all weekend. He arrived yesterday afternoon and he's been working ever since. So we're very, very grateful. I mentioned that Father uh, served 31 years at St. Mary Medical Center and 19 years at St. Joseph the Worker up until the merger. Currently serving at St. Michael the Archangel Parish in Levittown. He's living at uh, Our Lady of Grace in Pendel. He has helped at Immaculate Conception, and I found that after the last Mass through Hank, that Father also uh, assisted over at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. So I probably missed at least 10 of the parishes where you go, <laughs> but uh, you're so uh, available and helpful to the uh, diocesan priest as you serve your own diocese uh, through these missions during the summer flies all over the country to do these mission uh, appeals. And so this year when I got the letter and I saw who was coming, I thought, well, you couldn't walk here, but you certainly be drive in about five minutes. So I'm sure you were very happy to be home this, this weekend. So again, thank you very, very thank much. You. And finally, if I could call your attention, as I did last week, uh, to the Parish Bulletin, an excellent article, part two, an article written by Jean Madden uh, on the role of silence within the liturgy. Uh, this past Thursday night, she also provided a video on the same subject matter. So if you haven't seen either of the videos, just go back uh, a full week plus this past uh, Thursday and last week's bulletin and this week's bulletin. And Jean, we want to thank you for beautiful um, articles that you've written, giving a very clear uh, understanding that we provide silence uh, at the liturgy to allow the Lord to continue to speak to us in the silence. Thank so, you thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> That was all unrehearsed, I can tell you. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Father's going to give a blessing in his native language. You all come. Follow me. Help the pastor so the community, with that kind of attitude, reminded of uh, today's scripture, Peter telling, Lord, it's wonderful to be here. Let us make a booth, tent, so okay. you can always live with us. In many places when I go for preaching, I always tell them time, 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 but here, everybody comes to prayer. Beautiful music and liturgy and lively community. So you have so much time for the Lord as our pastor has so much time for everyone. I just wanted to share that uh, experience. It's a great privilege. So let me bless you in my own language. Sarvashaktanai devam pidavam putranam parishadhatmavam ningale evareyam Samurdhamai Anigrehikate. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, 
cast into the house Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 197. Holy God, we praise thy name, number 197. Thank you. 